Hi, welcome to the Center of Maths video series on the basics of number theory. Today we're going to be going over congruences. So when we have a statement like this, it reads A is congruent to B modulo M. A and B are, po are integers and M is a positive integer. And what this means is M divides A minus B. For an example, 13 is congruent to 4 modulo 9 because 9 divides 13 minus 4. Um, if, if M does not divide A minus B, then we say that A is incongruent to B modulo M. So since m divides a minus b, that means there's an integer k such that mk is equal to a minus b. Um, so we're going to go over a few of the basic properties of congruences. The congruence relation is an equivalence relation, which means it satisfies its reflexive, its symmetric, and its transitive. Reflexive just says that if A is a positive integer, then A is congruent to A modulo M. Uh, this, the proof for this is just A minus A is 0 and M divides 0, so this holds true. A symmetric property says that if A and B are integers such that A is congruent to B modulo M, then B is congruent to A modulo M. And for the proof, if we assume that A is congruent to B modulo M, that implies that M divides A minus B. So there's an integer K such that MK is equal to A minus B. We'll multiply both sides of that equation by negative 1. We have negative K times N, which is equal to negative quantity of A minus B, which is the same as B minus A, which says that M divides B minus A, which means that B is congruent to A modulo M. And the transitive property says that if A, B, and C are integers with A is congruent to B modulo M and B is congruent to C modulo M, then A is congruent to C modulo M. For the proof of this, we'll assume that A is congruent to B and B is congruent to C modulo M. This means that M divides A minus B and M divides B minus C. So there exist integers X and Y such that MX is equal to A minus B and my is equal to b minus c. We'll add these two equations together, 
mx plus my is equal to a minus b plus b minus c. The b's cancel out. So you have m, m, you can factor out the m, so we'll have m times the quantity of x plus y is equal to a minus c, which implies that m divides a minus c, and that means that a is congruent to c modulo m. Some other properties of congruences is that if a, b, and c are integers and m is a positive integer such that a is congruent to b modulo m, then a plus c is congruent to b plus c modulo m, a minus c is congruent to b minus c, and a, c is congruent to b, c. For the proofs of these, uh, they're pretty simple. You just To show that a plus c is congruent to b plus c modulo m, we'll assume that a is congruent to b, which means that m divides a minus b, and that says that there exists an integer k such that m k is equal to a minus b. You note that a plus c minus b plus c is reduced to a minus b, which we said is equal to m k. So that means m divides a plus c minus b plus c which says that a plus c is congruent to b plus c modulo m. And the proof for uh, a minus c is congruent to b minus c is the same. You just switch out a plus c minus b plus c to a minus c minus b minus c, and the result will come out the same. We'll just prove this last property. As we did with the other proofs, we're going to assume that a is congruent to b, which implies that m divides a minus b, which says that mk is equal to a minus b. Hopefully, as that part is catching on by now. Uh, so ac minus bc will factor out the c. So we have c, uh, c times a minus b, and we said that mk is equal to a minus b. So we'll substitute that in for a minus b. We have AC minus BC is equal to C times M times K, which means that M divides AC minus BC, which says that AC is congruent to BC modulo M. This is just a warning that if you have ACs congruent to BC modulo M, then you can't just say that A is congruent to B modulo M. For example, 14 is congruent to 8 modulo 6, but you can't divide both numbers by 2 to say that 7 is congruent to 4 modulo 6. Actually, the theorem for this is that you let the greatest... Um, common divisor of C and M. We have AC is congruent to BC modulo M, 
and a, b, and c are integers, and m is an integer greater than zero. Then a, c is congruent to b, c modulo m. Um, if you divide both sides by c, then the module becomes m over d. We'll just do a quick example. We have 50 is congruent to 20 modulo 15. Uh, you can check that. 50 minus 20 is 30, and 15 divides 30. And a common factor that these two have in common is 10. So if you want to divide both sides by 10, you need to change the 15. And the 15 will become 15 divided by the greatest common divisor of 10 and 15, which is, three, which is 5. And so we have 5 is congruent to 2 modulo 3. This covers the basics of congruences. If you like this video and you want to see more number theory, be sure to check out our other videos in this series. Thank you for watching. Check out Center of Math and check out our blog and follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you.